For this scene analysis, I'm gonna be breaking down the cinematography in a feature film that I DP'd called The Salton Sea. The biggest takeaway with this breakdown is how to cover a scene with two characters. Any narrative project you shoot from a short, a feature, to maybe even a narrative music video will likely have at least two characters. And the cine, you know, how to cover a scene is a big role of a cinematographer. Yes, we've dived in extensively into the lighting. This is less of a lighting breakdown, but more of just like the analysis of how to cover a scene. So similar to the last scene analysis, I'm gonna take a moment and just kind of give you a little bit of backstory on what this film is about. The good news is the scene I am showing you is actually the first scene of the feature, you know, of the film I'm breaking down. So, you know, there isn't really a whole lot of context that you need, you know, going into this scene. Uh, as you, you know, if you were to watch the rest of the movie, you know, you do sort of follow this younger boy as he's all grown up and sort of, you know, where life has brought him and, yeah, I mean, without getting too much into it, this scene, this opening scene, the one I'm doing a scene analysis of, is, yeah, like I said, the first scene of the movie where he's a young boy, he's with his dad, and he's about to watch the space shuttle launch. And that's kind of like a moment that him and his father shared. And yeah, like I've kind of announced before, this is a scene where I'm going to be kind of breaking down the coverage, you know, going from a wide cowboy over the shoulders. There's also additional coverage like inserts and, you know, clean close-ups and stuff. But yeah, beyond that, going to dive into coverage, how to cover a scene with two characters. So yeah, with that, let's jump in. And like the last scene analysis, I've included identifiers around the perimeter of the shot. You know, from identifiers of the shot size, you know, the length of the scene. What's a little bit different than the last breakdown is I've actually included identifiers on the right. Ones that say OTS, which means over the shoulder, clean and dirty. And if you are unfamiliar with clean and dirty are, I'll give a brief breakdown before jumping into the scene. Clean is a piece of coverage that just features one actor. You know, there's nothing else in the frame other than that one actor. Um, and dirty is, you know, a shot of, say, an actor, but there's a little bit of something in the foreground, usually the other person in the scene. So if you have a dirty medium on an actor, usually the other actor in the scene is kind of out of focus in the foreground and vice versa if you were to kind of cut back and forth. Whereas a clean, you know, medium on an actor would not see or feel any of the other actor in the scene. So yeah, when you jump in and you, we kind of watch the scene, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You'll see when I, you know, identify clean, medium, or dirty, medium, you know, kind of what that looks like. But uh, yeah, we're going to play the scene right now. Are you excited? Yeah. Good. You should be. You have to celebrate your country. See anything yet? It's all blue. That's what we get for coming out here instead of right by the base. Better proud out here, though. Should be right over those mountains. You're too young to be arrested. At least you're too young to admit you are. Those give you cancer. Sometimes you have to make your own choices in life. Screw what people say. Nine, 
So after watching this scene, I've pulled these four shots that I want to break down in today's scene analysis. It's the master, the cowboy, and both pieces of coverage that are dirty over the shoulder mediums. And this, the reason I've pulled these is these are kind of a blueprint for kind of covering any scene that involves two characters. And as you watch this scene, there are other external pieces of coverage. There were some cleans, some inserts, but truthfully, this is the best way, in my opinion, and kind of the most blueprint way um, to cover a scene with two actors. Before jumping into the first piece of coverage and breaking that down, I actually wanted to show a top down of all the placements of where the camera was and kind of show you what the 180 degree rule is and as it relates to coverage. So as you kind of see, I've got the master, the cowboy, and two over the shoulders. And you can see this red line going through our actors. This is the 180 degree rule or 180 degree line. And kind of the rule of thumb, mind you, things can be broken, but in this instance, you know, we decided to honor this rule and keep the camera on one side of the line. You can see if you were to place the camera on the opposite side of the line, you'd be breaking the 180 degree rule. Times you would break this is if there's like a scene shift, a reveal, a moment in the story where you want the audience to go, oh my God, like there's a shift in tone or shift in the character. But since this is really just a scene about a father and son watching something and kind of a, you know, just a memory that the kid is reliving, um, there, there was no scene shift or anything that we needed to reveal. So we left all of the coverage pretty standard. And this is like how you would cover 99% of scenes. Like I said, you can break this rule, but this is a very good rule of thumb to keep all of your camera setups on one side of the line. So this is the master shot. I like to use the term master, or you could also use the term establishing shot because that's what it does. You know, a master or an establishing shot establishes the geography. It shows the viewer, hey, this is where this scene takes place. And I like, you know, I, mind you, I didn't edit this scene, but a lot of editors will start with the wide, master or establishing, you know, start with the wider piece of coverage first. Um, you know, typically scenes don't just start on a close up. Um, I mean, they can, but they are a little disorienting because you're kind of robbing the viewer of showing, hey, we're at this location. You're just starting on someone's face. And in a scene that doesn't have any sort of stylized nature, like we didn't, you know, the scene didn't really call for starting on an extreme close up. So, you know, this scene, we wanted to establish where we were. So we show, you know, our two main characters that we eventually cover in closer angles are sitting on the tailgate of a truck. But what you're also able to get is geography. You see that there's other cars gathered around too. And this kind of helps build the setting. It sets the tone of, oh, wow, they're, you know, all tailgating. They're all, you know, watching this spaceship launch together. It really shows where the characters are. A good little tip too is when you are framing up your establishing or your wide is try not to bury your two main actors or whoever are the players in your scene behind anything. You know, you can see there's quite a lot of foliage and shrubs in the foreground and that was actually something we had to deal with. We had to take about 30 minutes and get like hatchets and stomp on the bushes because the bushes were actually competing with our frame. Like they were literally obscuring the two main characters. So, you know, I kind of drew some, you know, arrows at the bottom because you kind of want within a few moments, the viewer of the film to instantly have their eyes go where you want them to look. And if, you know, the two main characters are behind a bush, you know, that can kind of be distracting. So we want them to still be the focal point. So that's very important. Even though we have other cars, you know, you can kind of see the bushes are kind of obscuring some of the other cars and some of the extra background actors, but you have a very clean, you know, line of sight on our two main characters. And that's something that you want to do or keep in mind when setting up your establishing shot is make sure there's nothing in the foreground that's really competing for your viewer's attention. You know, obviously you can have foreground elements, but make sure that the center focal point of the scene is where you want the audience to look. And next up in our scene is the cowboy shot. And for those wondering, the term cowboy shot kind of derived from the early Westerns and, you know, basically the, the piece of coverage you'd get of like John Wayne riding a horse. They'd call it a cowboy shot because, you know, when you're framing up on, say, a subject riding a horse, 
they usually are kind of cropped off at the ankles. So anytime you are framing up on your scene or your subject and you find that your actor's ankles are cut or cropped off, that is technically called a cowboy. So as you're shot listing or setting up your shot, just know when you see us or see me use this term cowboy, that is what it is in reference to. What I really like about a cowboy shot as well is, you know, typically if I were to punch in a little bit tighter on these two actors, that would be called a two shot. Um, but a two shot, I feel like you lose a lot of information. And the decision to do a cowboy instead of a two shot is we want to be a little looser, a little wider. Because mind you, the first you know piece of coverage we've seen was our master establishing shot. And you know, mind you, these guys were kind of like little ants in the frame. You really couldn't get much information. You know, the information you got was that they were in the desert. There's other cars there. But you know, when you're delivering more information to your viewer. You know, I felt like if we punched in and we were kind of waist up in a two shot, we would have lost, you know, the fact that they're sitting on the edge of the truck, that he's holding a pair of binoculars. So that was sort of the psychology of choosing to go to a slightly wider two shot, which, you know, ended up being this cowboy. And I felt that kind of worked for this scene because, you know, inherently we're going to go in tighter. We're going to get our other pieces of coverage. But I felt like this was a nice, you know, kind of bridge between the master establishing shot and the tighter pieces of coverage. One of the last things I want to touch on is a term called stacking. Stacking as you start to frame and sort of line up your compositions is the idea of something being behind your subject that's kind of competing for your viewer's eye. Um, when I initially lined up this shot, the shot was actually a little bit more to the left to where that group of people, even though they're out of focus, they were behind the little boy's head. So if you were to look at the little boy during the scene, which you would typically when you know characters are talking, you're gonna look at that actor. It was very distracting because emerging from his head, instead of there just being that little hillside, which there is now, there was a, that truck, a bunch of extras moving around. It was very distracting. It kind of made it look like his head had all this extraneous stuff going on. So what we did is we moved the camera a little bit to the right and you know, we still were able to keep all that fun production design stuff in the back, but at least it wasn't, you know, emerging from his head. Yeah, just kind of wanted to leave you with that, that term stacking. Uh, just keep it in your back pocket as you are lining up your shots on your projects. Just always factor in what's in the foreground and what's behind your subject. And, you know, just always try your best. You know, if the scene doesn't call for it, try to unalign them with distracting objects that might be in the back. The next piece of coverage I want to do a breakdown on are the pieces of coverage that are between the father and the son. I'm going to start on the dirty over the shoulder medium on the younger boy and kind of go from there. As I kind of touched on earlier, I think you kind of get the idea that dirty implies when a subject, usually the other, you know, actor in the scene is obstructing the frame kind of out of focus in the foreground. And what I really like about dirty over the shoulders is it kind of connects the spaces because when you do shot reverse shot and you're cutting back and forth between the son and the dad and they're both occupying kind of the dirty you know the foreground of the scene it allows you to kind of connect the spaces and that's something that's really helpful when you are doing a scene and you're sort of shot listing and setting it up there is sort of like a psychology about dirty over the shoulders and you know this is sort of my take on it this is something i've learned throughout the years is that dirty over the shoulders imply a connection because they really are sharing the frame you know the dad is sharing this little boy's piece of coverage and then when we flip around on the dad you know the little boy is sort of sharing his frame they're both in the shot even though it is someone's piece of coverage it's his medium you know it's the little boy's medium you know having someone dirty in the foreground like the dad there is a connection there you know they are sharing the frame and you know for a scene about a father and son sharing a moment together they're sharing this moment of watching a you know a rocket ship take off into the air there is a connection you know they're, they're bonding they're having this moment together and you know that's kind of what dirty over the shoulders can kind of be used because the alternative is just to do it clean imagine framing up on this little boy and the dad wasn't in the foreground that definitely evokes a different feeling and lastly, the other piece of coverage, the dad, which is also a dirty over the shoulder medium, but I just kinda wanna take a moment and break that down. I kinda wanna take a moment and just touch on horizon. Horizon is the line in the back, especially if you're shooting outside, you know, no matter where you're shooting, if it's a beach, or out in the prairie, if you're in the mountains, you know, when you have 
the horizon. You can kind of see the horizon behind your subject. Um, that is very helpful to understand where you want that horizon line to play. If you were to stick up or down the camera, the horizon line would shift. Like for instance, if I were to stick up the camera and make this a high angle, that horizon line would actually be going up. Or if I were to do a low angle, we would barely see that horizon line given that you're shooting up towards the sky. So this is sort of another tool, something from a framing composition standpoint. 